Good evening. I'm Kill the Vid. I'm your host for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. And I'm back again with another edition of Let's Play Classic featuring Assassin's Creed Syndicate. This is going to be part of the Dreadful Crimes DLC in which Jacob and Evie solve unsolved crimes all over the boroughs of London. This is going to be the third live stream walkthrough of this DLC. And do me a favor, if you're new to this channel, please like, follow, and subscribe to the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. This helps me and the channel out very much. And without any further ado, grab your favorite snack, grab your favorite drink, Grab what you need. It's time for Let's Play Classic featuring Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Right now on the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. Here we go. Just waiting to get visual. Bear with me, folks. I'm working out the technical stuff. Okay, we're getting a visual. That's good. Very good. I'll switch to game screen. And then we have the chat. All right, we're ready to go.
So we're continuing with the dreadful cross. I did solve the last one off stream. And just like before, I made the wrong accusations. In other words, I accused the wrong persons of interest. And every time you do that, you reduce your reward. So this does remind me of L.A. Noir from Rockstar Games. If anyone has remembered that game, I've actually had it on my stream like some time ago in the last year. You do have some deductive reasoning and process of elimination techniques involving the criminal investigation. But it's not as elaborate as Ellie Noir is with the Dreadful Crimes DLC in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So there's that. Right. So, with these streams, I usually go for three hours, so, like, no more than three hours. And you can play as either Jacob or Evie when doing the Dreadful Crimes DLC. So I'm in the White Chapel District. You all right? If you're well enough, thanks. And as I mentioned before, you can recruit up to five members of the Rooks Gang. But you can call it your cart and you'll get about five members of the rooks pulling up in a horse and buggy. But there's a look, there's an enemy right there. Take him out. Yeah, talk that shit now, man. Now I'm just gonna loot the body. Now let's go to their next dreadful crime without wasting any time. Won't bite back now, will you? Let's see if I can set the map. Okay, there's one right right down the street. Good. And then within the same district, I yep, within the same district. The fiend of Fleet Street. Okay, let's make a switch. I'm the one driving. Everybody get in. Municipal damage. Let's go. Uh, the rush is I'm in a bit of a hurry. That's what. Now mind your own business. So I'm going to try my best with this case not to uh, make the wrong accusation. So here's the uh, author and his lad. So 
this again is the dreadful crimes the fiend of fleet street so what i've been able to do is try to squeeze about two dreadful crimes in one stream which of course is in the span of three hours so i'm gonna do my best to get through at least two cases so anyway it says here solve the case of the missing detective murphy the reward is two thousand pounds and a thousand xp serves you bloody well right and as always i switch to a cinematic screen game screen in case there's any cutscenes. Usually it's just a real time. In this case, with the DLC is a real time. Ah, this is one that's most promising. An important no detective is missing. Made. Skullduggery is surely afoot. Solve it, and I'll write it up quick as you please. In other words. The author, in this case, Henry Raymond, we'll writes these now, writes these novels without the mention of us. Like, we're the ones that are in the trenches and we're the boots on the ground solving the case while he writes them. Dead as a doorknob. Which is quite fine by Jacob and Evie. So the first thing we gotta do is get to Fleet Street. Or unless we're already on Fleet Street. So I guess we don't even have to be on foot, we'll just travel by horse and carriage. And in the dreadful crimes, you don't actually engage in any physical violence. That's a good thing for many people. Whereas with the other missions and other DLC, there is some violence. Especially, particularly the Jack the Ripper. And I'm gathered, I gathered the last Maharaja, Maharaja, you know, DLC, which are their own episodes. Someone take the reins from that driver! That one's long gone. Whoa! Get back, sir. Or I'll run you over. And get away from it. No jury's gonna convict me. Easy, easy. There's Frederick Abelard. What can you tell us about Detective Murphy? He's a friend of mine. The whole station is out looking for him as we speak. Ironically, he came here on an investigation himself. Seems several people have gone missing in this part of town. So, tell me about the missing people. We've had reports of missing people over the last few months. Detective Murphy is just the most recent and the only one who's anybody to speak of. So we got the bakery, the flower shop, and the leather shop. Using the eagle vision, I'm able to look for like important clues, talk to important POIs, etc. So there's a clue here. Leather bag made of pale leather on the bottom is a fading green image it appears to be a cross of some sort so in this area alone in the flower shop there's only three clues i've saw i found one of them and there's two pois i need to interview so let's find the other clues okay there's another clue Right before the pure. This is <coughs> a bag of manure. 
a sack of manure for plants. Examination shows that small bits of bone are mixed in. One appears to be a human knuckle. Oh dear. Well now, I didn't ask about this. This is like some Sweeney Todd shit, man. There's a human knuckle found in a bag of manure. Which means somebody was thrown, was murdered and thrown in there. Which could be our guy. That's missing. And worse comes the worst, his body has been cast into, into that and turned into manure. Flower shop woman's jacket, made of soft brushed leather, decorated with diamond shaped holes. Take that fucker out, please. So we got all three clues found, and now it's time to interview the POIs. I wouldn't call them suspects. I just call them POIs. I saw him going into the barber shop when I was on my way to work. In this kind of neighborhood, people come and go. Thank you. Now let's interview the other POI. This person is Stephen Bean, Flores. Good riddance. An odd man indeed. He spent a fair amount of time in here, poking around. Some people around town just seem to vanish. It is mysterious. George delivers that to us. It's amazing. The flowers just grow and grow. Who's this door? Sweet boy. Constantly giving my assistant gifts, a jacket, a handbag, and so on. Oh, yeah. Come on. oh boy. I'm one to think, not to jump to conclusions, but I'm one to think that George might be the person that knows where Murphy is, or at least knows what he had done to Murphy. And then he's giving out these gifts to these people. Think about it. He's murdering the people. This is my assumption. He's murdering the people. Having them turn to manure and then giving away their personal effects. Like it's Christmas. That's my operating theory. I do have another question to ask. Uh, Joanna. The floors. I saw him going into the barber shop when I was on my way to work. George is my sweetheart. I think he plans to propose marriage soon. Maybe even today. Hey, let's go to the next location. Where the hell did he get to then? And also a detective who gets lost. This is getting creepier by the minute. Check out the bakery. Who's some evidence? What's this? Bills. Bills paid. Several from George for meat delivery. Meat delivery. It seems Mrs. Moffat pays promptly and gets a good deal from George. Oh boy. I think George might be our murderer. Or somehow he's unknowingly giving out products made from people about his knowledge. He was in here asking about missing people. Bought a meat pie, he did. Stayed and chatted for a few minutes meat and pie. headed off to the barber. Oh. Guys like the Sweeney Todd dude. I'm told that some people have gone missing, but I don't know anything about it. Never mind, I need to watch that movie. Uh oh, something's going on. I'm told on. that some people have gone missing, but I don't know anything about it. This is definitely some Sweeney Todd shit. 
For those who are not familiar with the story of Sweeney Todd, there's a movie in it with, I think, with, uh, what's his face? Yeah, Johnny Depp in it called Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Of Fleet Street. There's a barber shop in this Fleet Street. Which is the mean, this is kind of a Sweeney Todd kind of thing. So he kills his, gives revenge on his victims and turns them into meat pies. That's that story of Sweeney Todd in a, nut, in a nutshell. So, which reminds I think I need to watch that movie. No matter how demented it is. Crates of meat. A crate of meat with no label. The meat smells a little odd. Yep. It's obviously human body parts. That's unusual. Jeffrey Dahmer shit. That's sick. If only the people knew who and what they were eating. Definitely you are what you eat. As in you're eating a human being. Can you tell us about George the meat? George delivers meat for my pies. Lovely lad. I pay on delivery. I believe he picks it up from a local butcher shop. <laughs> getting clippier by the minute. Uh, here's the butcher. John Times, the butcher. You definitely have a lot to answer for, mister. You mean the annoying bloke nosing around? I told him to sod off. I pride myself on the quality of the beef I sell. Somebody selling cheap around here, though, my sales have dropped off. So he's definitely not that person. He's definitely not the person, but I think all George. points to George. George? I don't know any George. Yeah, we'll just say he's your competition. <laughs> so, let's go. What's the next? Done the bar. Oh, I think we've done the barber shop, so let's go to the barber shop. Yep, all right, did the bakery, did the butcher shop. Let's go to the barber shop. Oh yeah, and the leather shop too. Continue, shall we? Leather shop, who knows? It could be human flesh. Can you imagine wearing a pelt made of human flesh? Oh, and yeah, now I think of Ed Gein.
So much time at the leather shop. Barbershop, let's see what this is. Razors. Sharpen barbers razors. Splatter. Several drops of blood. Someone has stepped in it, leaving a now trail. Now I've seen this, I should ask more questions. Somebody's screaming in the background. I don't know what that's about. This is Feeney's side. Yeah, I gave him a trim. He asked no ended questions. When I cut his hair, I notices a tattoo right at the base of his neck. A green Celtic cross, it was. George was in here earlier, getting an haircut. He wanted to look nice for his girl. He's been seeing Joanna from the flower shop for some time now. Said he's finally saved up enough money to pop a question. I'm trying to quit drinking. Sometimes my hand shakes when I'm given a shave. You're right. Several people have disappeared over the past months. Some of them were customers of mine. Okay, now let's go to the leather shop. Get to the other side, right over there.
going into the leather shop. Tobias Jeffrey. Leather scrap. A sheet of leather with a diamond shaped hole in it. Leather working tools, a collection of sharp knives and strong thick needles, thick needles. All persons with such saws know which to use to punch distinctly shaped. Distinctly shaped holes. That was interview to POI. Be right back.
Okay, I'm back. So, things I'm assuming right now is that the missing victim, in this case, the Detective Murphy, may have just had been killed and he's being pawned off as meat being sold. Some cannibalistic shit. All the clues have been found. Now let's talk to the. Uh... We got here leather working tool. So between the butcher, the so between the butcher and the leather maker, I think there might be two people responsible. For the missing detective. This case gets sicker by the moment. Thus, it is a dreadful crime. Go talk to the man. came in asking lots of questions. I believe I answered them to his satisfaction. I suppose there are a few people I haven't seen in a while. Why would you want to know about him? Stupid boy. He does deliver tan leather on occasion, but I really have very little to do with him. So, oh, it's definitely George. He's delivering meat and at the same time delivering leather, which means He's killing people and passing them off as products, as consumable. Okay, let's go down here. There you go. Oh, how about you get smashed to pieces? Mind your own business. Slowly. George, I hoped he'd stop by. I want to see his new haircut. He must be at his house. Oh, I do hope he proposes soon. In this kind of neighborhood, people come and go. Okay, everybody's been interviewed. Now we need to go to George's house. So it turns out that most of the people I've interviewed know very little about George except for a few, a couple. The fact that George gives out 
gifts of all kinds, of all sorts. But other than that, much is, there's not much to go on. I need about your skills. It. So we need to get over to George's house. Likely George is the killer. All you gotta do is just brandish a firearm without shooting it. And then they'll back off. From intimidating people on the streets. Okay, on the way to Georgia. Tag, tag, you're it. Yep, Georgia's house. Now let's look for some clues. the way, kid. Detective business. Look for some in everything. We got here. Ledger. A list of pickups and drop offs. The pickups are mysterious. The drop offs are meat delivery, meat delivered to bakery, manure to forest, and there was a knuckle, human knuckle found in the floor, in the manure. Leather to Tobias. Leather delivered to leather worker. The totals show a thriving business, but the supplier gets most of the money. Really? Really? I don't have to take this. Yeah. How about you take this? Get out of here. Beat it. Beat it. Yeah, you better run your ass out of here. Like some footprints. Okay, we're coming across some more evidence. Oh, look. A dead body. George's body. Oh, Joe, George is dead. George is very recently dead. His chest has a puncture wound and a diamond shaped hole. So, the diamond shaped hole. Leather. What's that? That. What you call it, guys? Now. That Tobias's place. What do we got here? 
diary. A diary entry indicating that George is becoming increasingly suspicious concerning his delivery. Now that I have enough set aside to propose to Joanna, I have written a detect to a detective about my suspicions regarding the true source of the product I delivered. Now I'm at the point where I need to accuse him. So George is dead. But we can't find Detective Murphy. We got a funnel. So it's the leather person. So the guy, the leather person that's probably doing the killing is likely the person of interest and not the barber. So the leather maker and George might have been conspiring might have worked with each other until they turned on each other. Go to the leather shop. make the accusation. Let's just test let's test the psychology of this person's behavior. He came in asking lots of questions. I believe I answered them to his satisfaction. Hmm. Why would you want to know about him? Stupid boy. He does deliver tan leather on occasion, but I really have very little to do with him. I suppose there are a few people I haven't seen in a while. I think this is the guy. But I need to go over the evidence one more time. Because I saw... He was skinned alive. Yep, this is our guy. So I'm gonna bite the board and accuse him. Asking a lot of questions, huh? so it's rousing suspicion. No, no one else was suspicious. Yep, so I'm just gonna flat out accuse this guy. Find out. Every time you make the wrong accusation, the amount of the reward money goes down, so here we go. He was coming too close to figuring out where all those people went. <laughs> they got parceled out to the baker, the florist, and me. Yep, we got him. Yep, good. You very cleverly puzzled that one out. A very unpleasant crime. Perfect for one of Mr. Raymond's penny dreadfuls. Take this bastard away. 
The fiend of Fleet Street. Even a detective can run adrift when a nefarious business is afoot. Was Detective Murphy getting too close to a secret source of raw goods? Although the worker was in the habit of doing away with local folk, flaying them and then chopping them up. He had the skin tanned for leather, the bones grounded up to sell as manure, and the bloody flesh sold to supply pie shops with cheap meat. All delivered by... The unwitting Carter George. Thus did the fiend take macabre pleasure in seeing his victims happily consumed by the victims by the citizens of Fleet Street. Henry Raymond. Yeah, he definitely was the one. So that's one of the dreadful crimes in this episode. Very well. Very good. Case closed. I can't believe people would do that. People will resort to cannibalism, even to get rid of somebody. It's kind of comical, but at the same time, disturbing as shit. So let's go on to the next dreadful crime. I would hate to be made into a pie. Okay, here we go. The mystery of the twice dead professor. We're gonna quit travel for this though.
Geronimo. Oh, he kind of looks like Sherlock Holmes. Bless you, madam. Come with me. I have a job for you. There's one of the blighters. Whack him. Count me. Oh, whack her. Serves you bloody well right. Talents people are reacting to the dead bodies. I need the dinosaur talent. Someone's been slain! Come quickly! You won't bite back now, will you? Ah, 
Jacob. How you doing? Take him out. Is a door mail. Serves you bloody well, oh, right? Where are you? Won't bite back now, will you? Serves you bloody well, right? together now. Here we are. 
The mystery of a twice dead professor. Solve the mystery of the professor who, once buried, returned to die in his parlor. In other words, he probably faked his death. And then it made it official. And somebody made it official. Here's an especially exciting one. Perfect for a penny dreadful. A famous professor dies twice. That's once more than usual. Twice as many sales. My name will soon be known across the nation. That's what we called the case of the twice baked potato. Let's go find the body. into a zone. Professor Bing's body. The body shows evidence of having been in a terrible struggle. There is a deep cut to the forehead that appears to be surgical. The cut goes into the skull itself, which means it might have been a doctor or a medical professional of some kind. I'm going to start looking for clues first before I interrogate. Personal letter. My dearest love, I do not understand your father's antipathy towards me. I fear that he will take steps to disrupt our engagement. Please obtain his assurances that no matter if you marry me or no, he will render you your due when the time comes. Your betrothed, Virginia. Uh, 
Sculpture. An intricately carved sculpture evidently of African origin. There is a small recess where something could have been hidden. Four more clues to find before I interview the suspect. Crate. An open wooden crate shipped from within London. It is clearly marked to be opened only by Professor Bing personally. Well now, I didn't ask about this. Dead spider, a large distinctive spider curled up in death. Okay, two remaining pieces of evidence. Letter from colleague. Esteemed Professor Bing, my research trip has been a great success. I have been able to verify personally several of the unusual customs that you chronicled in your brilliant book. Once again, I am humbled by your genius. Signed, Professor Silas. I should go back and ask about this. And then we got the last clue for this area. Actually, that wasn't a <sighs> This is another letter. Legal letter. A recent letter to Professor Bing from his attorney. My dear Bing. I can certainly amend your will to discourage the marriage of your son with the young lady in question. An annual allowance that will be suspended in the event of such a marriage should serve the purpose. If, as you suspect, she is driven by love of money, such a provision should considerably dampen her ardor for her son. Well now. I didn't ask about this. Okay, that's all the clues. Now it's to interview the POIs. So, he might have been killed by a poisonous snake, uh, poisonous spider. Or maybe that wasn't what killed him. It's so very awful. The professor died of an art attack just days ago. Then tonight, I hear pounding at the door. I open it to find him bleeding and in pain. He tried to say something then collapsed dead. Again. What did he tell about the spider? Spider? Let's get that out of here. Oh. Emmett is definitely afraid of spiders. Emmett Bing, obviously. He kept repeating. Barqueso, Barqueso, over and over. 
What does it mean? He got that a few days ago. Inside was a statue. I thought it was a marvel. But he told me it was quite common. I don't know who sent it. What do you know about being? It's unthinkable. Such a great man. We were still in mourning from the burial. He was buried yesterday in the family plot. He seems overtly dramatic. This is no time to talk about the will. It is true that my father and my fiance didn't get on, but I'm confident that once he got to know her as a daughter-in-law, they would have become friends. Will. This is no time to talk about the will. It is true that my father and my fiancé didn't get on, but I'm confident that once he got to know her as a daughter-in-law, they would have become friends. So this is Emmett Bing. It's unthinkable. Such a great man. We were still in mourning from the burial. He was buried yesterday in the family I think he might have had something to do with this. This is no time to talk about the will. It is true that my father and my fiancé didn't get on, but I'm confident that once he got to know her as a daughter-in-law, they would have become friends. My father was an eminent anthropologist, and so, something that this is the son. He made his name by investigating the practices of a small village in the Congo. His colleagues at the university often sent him trinkets from abroad. So this is the son. Keep moving. Steady on. Easy now. Let's go. Stop at the university.
receipt. A suspiciously nondescript receipt for seven pounds. Be right back.
I am Kill the Vid for the 9 to 5 Outlook Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. And this is a recording test of Mad Max from Avalanche Studios. It's been out since 2015. And it's going to be an upcoming Let's Play on the 9 to 5 Outlook Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. Right now, I'm testing the, the OBS software. You are in the outer graves. Over there is the great white. This won't be the final recording. I'm not sure. No, of course, I'm going to start an epic game bottom, from the beginning. It doesn't get any lower than this. the beginning, so. Disregard the cinematics. It's just to test the gameplay as well as my recording capabilities. Get some light on me. Of course, I had to tweak the settings to the game. Like it went fluid on OBS because we try to go on high settings, <laughs> high settings with the video card I've got, which is the GeForce GTX 650 Ti. That's like one gigabyte of RAM. Well, I had to go with the lowest settings possible. So there's that. This is going to be our base of operations. Now, when you're ready, this is made in the style of the original base. classic, cult classic film from the 70s and 80s, and even in 2015 with Fury Road. That this is his own story, and it doesn't take place anywhere with the police. <laughs> and the, the character is still the same. It's not Mel Gibson or. Uh, huh? Rock. Oh, it's the thing. The angel made steel. Tom Hardy, yeah. By the fire that moves the piston, by the tranny on all high, by the cam and the huge George Miller. Huh? There she lies. I'm sure, George I Miller will sign off of this game. He is the original writer, director, and creator of the Mad Max series. There she is. And he's Australian. He said most of the voice acting is Australian. No. No, no. It's in a Alex dystopian wasteland future where gasoline is scarce and it's apocalyptic. Look. Everybody's out for themselves. Here. So is Matt. And a symbiosis so is Max. Max, Max Rockstead. Rockstead and C. Whatever his name religion, is. Huh? I got a classic whammy turbo high dog. Huh? Hell yeah! Well, this is a character protected. called Chum Bucket. And Chum Bucket is this mechanic who's... Spring. Mine is gone, Link's but yet he's still nothing less. would consider to be a valuable asset to uh, an ally to Mad Max because he has no money. And what else is out to skin it? Because he got strips. He got his car stolen. His prime joy stolen. As well as other people that left naked out in the desert. In the desert wasteland. So now we're getting parts to build this vehicle. The scavenger. We will liberate her body from a place sad and strange where the chariots of old went to die. A place I call the graveyard. This character's making all sorts of references. The dead of night, the buzzard guardians are away on their final hunt. So there's a man. This is the map we need to get to, to and from. So we get back in. Apologize for this controller, but this is where I need to go. When made available, you can fast travel. So I got the marker on. Let's go. Fortunately, with gas town comes the blessings of gasoline. We should find enough fuel for us to make it to the graveyard. First, we need to get some gasoline. It says 
ammo and gasoline is scarce. You, you'll need both to survive. See, there's the fuel gauge Ooh, at the bar. What prizes do you hold? She's out of gas. Oh, these guys ain't gonna help you. Go oh, yeah. You ain't taking these things. Scavengers. Like I told you, you can't trust any of them. Well, I'm so sure you can trust Chum Bucket. At least for now. Take that. Combat system. It's decent. And this is from the same makers as uh, the Just Cause series. Press A and O. Okay, that's a scrap. But we need fuel. More importantly, we need fuel. You can loot bodies too. But we need fuel. Oh, it's so the right way for it. Oh, it's good. Okay, here we are. This is what we need. Full can. No, you have the option of using this as a weapon, but right now we're using it for real. Hell up, huh? All the way to the brim! <sighs> All fuel. So you're gonna need ammo, water, and gas. You're gonna need the basic necessities. He's full! <laughs> but you can find an food, that'd be great. Or I like games where you have to account for survival. So right now we're gonna need a store of fuel. So we're gonna need some additional fuel. We're gonna add some reserve. Now, let us make haste before the nightly hunters return to their lair. Oh, there's some more. We're, 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 we're hauling. Oh, yeah, I like this. I love this. Oh, shit. Let me pick this up. Can you store this, too? Well, I'm going to keep it on hand if I can. Oh. Oh, wait. I'm going to get some when you're dead. So, keep the car safe. Let's see what you what goodies you got too. So this would be a good place to get fuel. But you only can carry so much, fortunately. I don't want to don't want it to go to waste, so No, pick that up. Oh yeah, plenty. one count.
Bam! <laughs> Exaltations! Just cracked open! Well, I'm gonna get some fuel back out of there. We must hurry. Wardens of displaced murder on sight! Uh-oh. Settings, I'm surprised how this looks. No! Little dangling man killers everywhere! I can't! Too late. Let's not do that again. Ah, I guess those are the, the warden's uh, booby traps. I guess those are the booby traps. Not taking any chances. Feels about the dome, so. This is where we're gonna get a car body. We're gonna get some armor. There! Our prize right for the taking! Go, go quickly! The oh, only way to get up now. there is through those cave tunnels! Get the car in place down here. I'll lower the body onto it. So you got to be conservative of both your gas, your fuel, your petrol, your ammo, and everything. You pick up scraps. Yeah, I guess they're upgrading down this. Upgrade. Oh wait, wait. There's a zip wire. There's a zip line.
Still works too. Then the enemy would be seen right over there. So gonna have to put him there. Like I said, this is from the makers of just of the Just Cause series. I need water anyway. This is how you replenish your health with water. I guess there's no need for food in this game. Nice if there's a hunting, you know, adventure just like in Red Dead. You can hunt for food, hunt for food, and maybe, you know, sell the uh, proceeds. There you are, Sonny. And you've got the whole world up there in your hand. You've you got a choice to make. Which one shall be your prize? The script, please. So we can choose. What do I want? Oh, they have names too. I like that one. So you got furnace, shovel face, death. Choose furnace. Can you paint? No. Oh, shit. It's a good company. at it again the last hour of the stream and I'm starting the remainder of this case which I'm gonna try to commit to two cases per stream with the dreadful crimes uh, DLC so let's continue shall we so I'm using Jacob this time to crack the case so we've interviewed other POIs but first, I want to make sure I go through the clues. Any and everything. Handkerchief. A lace handkerchief with red embroidery. 
now maybe um well I'm thinking the possible suspect might be the son of the author I mean of the professor who's decided to because the possible motive is that he objects to him marrying a certain woman. Treatise by Professor Wilson. On the topic of unusual Bolivian sp of an unusual Bolivian spider, one passage notes that the venom produces a state resembling death, and that some Andean tribes use the venom during a rite of passage in which initiates boys experience a symbolic death lasting two or three days. So I believe the professor was killed with a rare type of spider. I believe I should reinterrogate a suspect. So the use of a spider, think about it, seems to be like a harmless, you know, low, uh, what do you call it? Blameless death. I believe I should reinterrogate a suspect. Because think about it. Imagine if somebody was to bump somebody off and you use a spider to do it. They think the spider just came out of nowhere, but then how could you pin somebody to the crime? Especially if it's, you know, a murder. This is Dr. Wilson. An himself. eminent colleague. He wrote prolifically. Probably no one will ever amass the amount of knowledge he acquired. So I believe it is up to two suspects. Mr. W Dr. Wilson or the son. It's either one of those two, but more than likely, when mur certain murders are committed, there's typically a motive, when you think about it, a reason, whether it's a jealous rage or getting cut out of an inheritance, you name it. An empty box labeled arachnid. Carbodectus. And I, I think believe I should reinterrogate a suspect. I think the son took the opportunity to kill off his own father with the spider that Dr. Wilson had ordered. And it just happened to stumble on it and think, yay, this is a good way to kill him. Yeah. And it will never link back to him, so he thinks. It will never trace back to him, so he thinks. Pedestal, a pedestal with enough with nothing on it. However, on a descriptive label is written Bagesu Tribal Mass, a jackal. Book written by Professor B. The intriguing customs of deepest Africa. An entire chapter is torn from it. Mm. I should go back and ask about this. You'll find out who's got that. Now this is circumstantial evidence. Actually, it's not even evidence at all. It's a circumstantial item for my benefit, but it has nothing to do with the case. Bookcase. A well-stocked library of anthropological, anthropological books. Roll that off the top of my tongue. A well-stocked library of anthropological, anthropolog, anthropological thank you, books. A significant number of them are by Professor Bing. All well thumbed, which means they were read through. 
because he was an avid reader. See what else is at the window, maybe. What other evidence can I find? Oh, what's this? Now that I've seen this. I should ask more questions. Oh, there's another location before I uh, make an accusation. I think there's a piece of evidence I had just missed. Unaccounted for. The spider was in the box. And then was let loose on the professor, killing him. Ah, oh, here we go. Here's something here. It's the spider. The drawing. An illustration of a spider resembling the dead spider found in the Bing home. A note describes it as a rare spider found in Bolivia whose venom is a strong tranquilizer. Okay, let's go interview the PO. I'm most vexed about that. A rare specimen of the sort I've been studying for years. It escaped a few days ago, no doubt due to that scatterbrained assistant Virginia. My thesis subject. My South American colleagues tell me that this particular arachnid is only found in the Bolivian Andes. Fascinating subject. I don't think the professor has any ill will towards his dead colleague, so I think that rules him out. Oh wait, there's somebody up there. Professor Silas. The anthropological sciences have lost a great mind. He revolutionized the field. It is my fond hope that I may inherit his mantle. Mm. Which one is that? Sorry, difficult to read. I've lost my spectacles somewhere. Might I recently traveled to Africa in order to continue studies on the indigenous tribe Professor Bing discovered some time ago. I think he might be trying to... Uh, What do you call it? Trying to outstage him? <laughs> Up, upstage and kind of, you know, be his uh, successor. Virginia again. A lovely man, and quite wealthy. I only wish he had lived to bless my alliance with his son. I'm sorry to hear about that. 
Do you know whether that change was actually made? I hoped you wouldn't find that. I'm afraid several of the faculty purchased cadavers for research purposes. It's a fact of university life. Okay, in this area, all the POIs have been interviewed. So there's one last area, and that, of course, is the cemetery. Get out the way. What the hell was that? Out the way, sucker. Oh, there's two other locations. No, no, we've already been there, so... We need to get to the cemetery. If I'm gonna descend down from this height, I'm gonna do it safe. Instead of going splat. Bing Family Vault. The lock is broken, the door is ajar. Professor Bing's casket is empty. Oh boy. I wonder what the other suspects will say to this. In other words, he, this corpse might have been violated, he might have been grave robbed. Grave digger's coat. An old worn coat. One pocket contains a couple notes. Here's the sum agreed upon for last night's transaction. Hmm. So the grave digger was probably paid to get his body out. To extract the body. Money, seven pounds sterling. I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. There's one remaining clue here before I go and interview.
one piece of evidence that I haven't touched upon. So it's the last half hour of the stream. Clue's gonna highlight in yellow. Point. I can see the whole area. Anything I've missed.
He showed up again. First time that's happened in 35 years of grave digging. I saw the sun lock the tomb myself. Body snatching? That's an insult. I'd be in the slammer quick as that if I got caught. It's plain that seven guineas is a lot for a bloke like me. I'm careful with me pennies and save for a rainy day. So I sell a body or two on the side. A man's got to eat, ain't he? I broke the lock and left him on a barrow just behind his tomb. Oh dear. You're good. You gotta find another clue. Might be in that tomb. Red and brown.
They follow me wherever I go until I tell them to stop. He got that a few days ago. Inside was a statue. I thought it was a marvel. But he told me it was quite common. I don't know who sent it. This is no time to talk about the will. It is true that my father and my fiancé didn't get on, but I'm confident that once he got to know her as a daughter-in-law, they would have become friends. My father was an eminent anthropologist and something of an explorer. He made his name by investigating the practices of a small village in the Congo. His colleagues at the university often sent him trinkets from abroad. It's unthinkable. Such a great... I think he's the one. The son obviously has more of a motive to bump him off. But it's simple fact he objected to it. Beyonce. We need to go back to the cemetery and find out that this includes. You're with me, if you really want me.
last 15 minutes of this one. Let's get to it. Let's solve it. Entering the cemetery. There's one crucial evidence I'm missing. Why I can make the accusation and crack the case. I'm thinking it might be the sun. something here. I think nope. I'm supposed to highlight gold. Oh shit. Yeah. Ready supply if you need me, Jacob. Why don't I come over there and give you a good thrashing? Why don't you shut the hell up? So I sell a body or two on the side. A man's got to eat, ain't he? I broke the lock and left him on a barrow just behind his tomb. It was dark, couldn't really see. But some fella come by and cart the old professor off. It's money back there. You can likely still see the tracks. It's plain that seven guineas is a lot for a bloke like me. I'm careful with me pennies and save for a rainy day. I saw the sun lock the tomb myself. Saw the sun lock the tomb. So I'm thinking the sun might have. So I'll get behind the tomb. Okay. Oh, there we go. Who's matches university? The handkerchief. A handker a lace handkerchief with red embroidery. Hmm. 
Okay. Now it's time to make the activation. Oh, money. Took a shot at me once. Serves you right. Oh. Not looking so tough now, are ya? Back to the university. Good riddance to bad rubbish. So it might have been the uh, other guy. Sun's up. Last ten minutes of this. Yes, that's mine. I misplaced a similar one, possibly at the funeral. I was so upset. I hoped you wouldn't find that. I'm afraid several of the faculty <sighs> purchase cadavers for research purposes. It's a fact of university life. <gasps> I'm sorry to hear about that. Do you know whether that change was actually made?
last five minutes. This is no time to talk about the will. We kept repeating, Barqueso, Barqueso, over and over. What does it mean? Maybe it's the professor. He got that a few days ago. Inside was a statue. I thought it was a marvel. But he told me it was quite common. I don't know who sent it. Spider, let's get that out of here. Nope. It's unthinkable. Such a great. My father was an eminent anthropologist and something of an explorer. He made his name. So I'm not gonna get this on the screen. That's going to do it for this additional Let's Play Classic featuring Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Dreadful Crimes, Gaming Livestream Walkthrough 3. I'm Kill the Vid for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. And stay tuned at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be streaming Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. And it's going to be the second of the Year of the Snake DLC. So tune in for that. I'm Kill the Vid, the knife for the 9 to 5 Outlaw does gaming YouTube and Twitch channel, and please stay safe.